very good morning everyone welcome on the 11th day of this two week advanced online professional training program on utilization of nano materials and instrumental methods for energy applications this is a bright sunny day here in jaipur and we are going to have our today's sessions on solar cell technologies we are extremely honored to have among us professor ambesh dikshit from iit jodhpur he will deliver two sessions today from 10:30 to 11:30 it will be on solar cell device fundamentals and its evaluation and in the post lunch noon session from 1:30 to 2:30 it will be current advances in solar cell technologies and some examples of distributed applications so first let me introduce him to the audience professor dr ambesh dikshit completed his phd from wayne state university michigan usa and his masters and bachelors from university of allahabad india currently he is working as associate professor at the department of physics indian institute of technology jodhpur he has wide experience in computational and experimental materials and device physics with a special emphasis on the design and development of materials for different applications his current research efforts are in developing functional nanomaterials and related products for energy water and health applications he is an expert in multifunctional materials and he was the first one to demonstrate that iron vanadate is a multiferroic system to the scientific community across the globe he has published more than 100 research articles and one indian patent his three indian patents are still in progress he co-authored two books nanotechnology for rural development elsewhere usa 2021 nanotechnology for defense application springer usa 2019 and he also co-edited two books renewable energy and climate change processing safari c 2019 springer 2019 and concentrated solar thermal energy technologies recent trends in applications springer 2018 in the stuff pandemic time being a non biologist he tried to understand covid 19 and co-authored a book on covid 19 pandemic impact and management in both hindi and english for general understanding to the common man dr dikshit is an editorial board member vacuum elsewhere and life member of various national and international professional societies sir on the behalf of gyan vihar university i welcome you and we are so thankful that despite of your busy schedule you agreed to take today's sessions in the middle of your journey so sir thank you so much for coming now i hand over this session to you for your technical talk uh, thank you so much uh, dr kriti for uh, being nice in introduction as well as organizers and especially professor ankur chan for this opportunity to share some of the experiences and knowledge that we are trying to build during our iit jodhpur stay and the talk as you have already mentioned will be in two sessions so first session will be more on basic understanding from cell to module level and emphasis will be given on characterization as you have mentioned in the talk of objective of this 15 days seminar or 15 days workshop but at the same time i request if someone has a question he can raise his hand he can ask at the same time or he can have collective questions and then he can discuss at the end and then we can take it as per our times availability so let me check first this presentation is working or not can you see the slides that they are moving yes sir yes sir i can see the slides and they are moving also hello hello yes can sir can you see that these sir, slides are slide. moving yes sir slides are visible and they are moving also good so in the past several days looking into the topics i am sure that many of you now well understand what is a solar cell 
and many of you know what are the materials that are used in this kind of technologies. So I have a little tune from two fundamentals looking into a very specific objective that may be equally important while understanding these solar cells. So that I will be taking with a new approach where people are looking from conventional silicon-based solar cells to the next generation solar cells. That will be a topic of our probably second half as well. So let me begin with what we uh, do at IIT Jodhpur and what drives us to take care of solar or to contribute in solar rather than saying taking care is not a right word. So for example, the statement by our ex-president, our late ex-president, Professor A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, in his independent speech during 2005, has said that by the year 2030, India should achieve energy independence through solar power and other forms of renewable energy. So this motivated with a tag word that IIT Jodhpur can contribute to it, energy for all, how and when, objective is still 2030, the way we can contribute. So with this, we take into account those words and try to mimic at least and try to catalyze ourselves to reach to the goals, even though it seems difficult to the present scenario, but it's still achievable. Why he said this? Probably he has given a thought that how we can resolve this particular problem of energy crisis, that, okay, we have a sun where we can see that abundance of energy is there and we don't know how to use it. It is much beyond our need, our need is still limited to 13 terawatt for global uh, needs. Whereas if you see how much is available to use plenty, we are unable to harness that particular thing in the right way so that I can use it, right? Another difficulty is there, it is not available 24 hours. Our renewable energies, they have this kind of difficulties that they are not 24 hours available. So where the problem lies, when you are in the daytime, you have a surplus of energy, surplus. But at the same time, when we come to the night time, means like this is morning, maybe morning 8 a.m. to evening 6 p.m., you can say, a diffuse light is still available in summer days. It's fine, you have low energy at the end, but at the in the mid of day, for a long period of time, you have surplus energy. But at night time, there is a big challenge that we do not have a energy, so we need to compensate. So that part also is equally important, how to store this. So only generation is not important, only generation cannot meet the requirement. We need to integrate simultaneously to harness the surplus heat, which is available from sun freely, either in the form of electrical energy or in the form of thermal energy, and then we can meet this additional requirement where in nights we do not have and nights we have more electrical loads or demands. So this is something that we need to keep in mind and that's where we, I am going to discuss only half of the part which is on the general side how to capture this but at the same time I am still lo losing or I am leaving this particular part to rest of the uh, talks are probably if it can catalyze in you a way to look at energy problem as a holistic approach, you may come up with an idea that how we look into it. Right? Both options are there. Can you tap it into electrical energy or can we tap into thermal energy as well? For that energy? So how your whole solar photovoltaic system works, very simple, right? It has three main components. We have a modules or a solar cell basically rather than calling that we call as a field in terms of um, uh, photovoltaic power plant. So there we generate we convert the incident solar energy into electrical energy. Then we need to use it directly. We can use directly as well. Or we can provide a storage in between to meet the, my previous requirement that where I have a excess energy I have stored to meet the requirement where I have no energy available to that. Right. So that is this, I can go directly from here to here. In this case, only I have a source of energy during sun hours, but to meet the requirement of off sun hours, we have this, and a lot of you have seen actual photo, actual uh, field of solar power plant, there you can see a half a kilometer to kilometer photovoltaic modules are available, and then at 
a control room, we have a huge set of batteries that store the power during daytime. And to mitigate the off and on some hours, they supply back to the system. In between, we have a problem to store it. And then there is a huge problem. It is not like simple arrow goes and then puts dump heads. We have a lot of energy converter because we are getting here DC. We need to convert back into, we need to charge them. And then from battery, we need to have them sufficient charger that can operate and then charge these kind of energy storage tanks. And then they can come back to the, release the energy. Again, you have to release in the form of AC. So. If I am using directly, then this is the option. Then this is the option if I am supplying it to the field. But at the same time, right, rather than supplying, we have a losses during conversion. What people are nowadays, they are coming with the new models. They are called DC microgrids. Rather than converting again into electricity, you build your utilities, for example, fan, for example, light, and all those things, those work on DC electricity. So that rather than using loss, Introducing loss into the system, you minimize that loss into the system and directly you can utilize it. So this is another possibility of directly using it to it as like a DC micro bit and then combining with the storage that you can put into generation with on uh, offline sun hour requirements as well. This is one of the technology that we will be dealing, we will be dealing with and we will be restricting ourselves to the PVR concentrated photovoltaics as well. We'll be looking into it with the current technologies. These, we are leaving it, for example, more into it when you are looking into it in detail. Another alternative technology to photovoltaic is there, which we are not talking today, is solar thermal technologies, where we concentrate the sun energy rather than directly convert it into electricity, we convert into thermal energy. So we convert into thermal energy and then we do the rest of the power plant. Might, you might have heard about coal power plant, nuclear power plants, right? So they heat, then use the thermal energy to convert water into a steam, pressurize it, and then rest of the generation of electricity is there. So this is based on half of that technology. So you use these collectors, which are again important and a different technology is required. And then you convert it into this thermal energy into uh, steam generation, and then you use it. But again, we can do all these things during daytime. So again, we need a transfer express block, just like in case of PV, right? Like in case of PV, we have batteries. Here, we should have thermal batteries, right? So the thermal batteries should do the job of storing thermal energy and releasing thermal energy during off sun hour. So there, I have a distributed application, means a small applications, like I can generate the electricity even in remote areas. Whereas in this case, the distributed applications are not like directly for power production that we need a large field, but a small solar thermal systems with a storage can provide you small heating, means like a distributed heating application in winter season, cooling and heating and cooling simultaneously apart from the electricity generation then again we need have we need to have a large so these are two ways we will be looking in one of them in solar technologies as well right fine so what we are trying to do we are trying to do at a several scales at iit jodhpur just like large scale solar thermal subsystems for solar thermal applications then subsystems include thermal energy storage systems, including low and high temperature. We also look for some of the next generation photovoltaic systems that we will discuss today, that what we do, as well as what is the current status and devices. Electrical energy storage, people are looking into batteries beyond lithium ion batteries and so on. Coatings for other different applications and then material centers from a small scale to the subsystem to the larger for both, which covers at the broader aspect of both generation as well as storage. Distribution, all the parts of these ones are by electrical. That is there. Right. So this is my first introduction part that what we are doing. Then I am not going to look into the details of what is a solar cell. Now I assume that you have a solar cell in your hand and how you characterize it, that is like that's where I tailored 
in, in between, you might have long exposure to a solar cell, solar cell materials, even some sort of characterizations as well. But assuming that you could make or fabricate a solar cell, in, solar cell in your laboratory, how you will characterize, that is very important, right? So here we will look at solar cells. Then we will also look, we, I have discussed about the solar power plants, solar PV power plant, then how we can make from cell, which is a very, which is the unit of these power plants, how we can use the unit of a solar cell to make module and arrays to get desired current and voltage characteristics at a larger scale. Then we have setting effects. Suppose if light is not falling on some of the solar cells and light is falling on some of the solar cells, how it can affect the characteristics as well, right? So this is like you have seen in the previous examples, you have a solar cell, very simple. It is like a PN junction diode, right? With a suitable band gap that can absorb the incident sunlight. And then it has several other layers to optimize its performance. For example, its performance means it also includes the stability. It should not break. Then it should not degrade it should have a easy cleaning mechanism so that if dust is there on top of it, you can clean it easily as well, right? It doesn't reflect back the incident sunlight. So you have a reflection footage. So if I cut a solar cell, and if I want to just understand how many layers we have, then you have a PN junction layer on a supportive platform that is not on the free platform. Then you have a back contact. Then on top of it, you have, for example, a, this is a supportive layer, then you have back contact, then you have a P-type layer, then you have an N-type layer, and on top of it, you have a front contact. So PN junction with a top and bottom contact. And then on top of it, you have an anti-reflection coating so that the incident light has no option to go back. It will go only inside the device. Then we have a transparent adhesive. On top of it, we have a glass cover so that we should not degrade our inner parts like anti-reflexive coating that should not get degraded. Otherwise, we will have a problem of the, uh, sunlight that goes back. So we cannot utilize 100% sunlight. Then we should not degrade our junction devices or solar cell devices. So this is just a cross section of a solar cell that you might see on your rooftops based on crystalline cell solar cell. This is not a Amorphous silicon solar cell. Amorphous silicon solar cell has a configuration PIN that has a P type amorphous silicon solar cell, then intrinsic amorphous silicon solar cell, then N type silicon solar cell. So, three layers of stacking is there because of the different regions in that particular case. But in case of PN junction and crystalline silicon solar cell, we have these layers to form a junction, then it has a built in potential and so on. Right? Then you can start using it by allowing the light to fall on it and then you can use it, right? So many of you have seen a very small solar cells, solar modules available to charge solar lantern, lanterns, solar lights and so on. Now question is how we characterize it, whether this is the right cell, whether it is a degraded cell, whether it is a, a standard cell or suppose if you fabricate a cell in the laboratory, what kind of characterizations we should need to understand it, right? So. This whatever we are talking about is a standard cell, which is like a monocrystalline solar silicon cell. It's a standard field efficiency I'm talking. Inside laboratory efficiency is around close to 30 percent, 25 to 30 percent people have achieved, demonstrated like 29 percent. But in field efficiencies, which I am talking about, when you go to the power plant, many of you might have seen them. So their average efficiencies are like up to 17%. If I take a amorphous silicon solar cell, efficiencies are 9%, 7 to 9%, that is there. Right. In between, there is a hybrid of crystalline and amorphous, like polycrystalline is coming into this. Their efficiencies are like close to silicon. So here, cost is too high. So to minimize that particular cost, people come up with this hybrid approach of polycrystalline silicon cell. There they can approach around near to similar efficiencies that they are achieving in crystalline silicon cell. Amorphous, this is field efficiency, but still they are reaching now up to uh, 9%. And in laboratory, they can show around up to something 11, 11 to 12% efficiency. So these are like very good efficiencies at the end. So it's, you see, it means of the 100 incident photon, only these many are, these many equivalent electrons are coming out from one with respect to one photon, 100 photons. I am getting 
only efficiently 14 to 17 electrons out participating in the external current that is there right so it means we have even though all the photons which are larger than the band gap are contributing in photo generation but we have n number of other mechanisms where we lose these excess of photo generated electrons in the system and then we need to understand why and if we understand why can we come up so can we come up with a system where we can minimize all these things and then we can raise the performance to the desired solar thermal limits right that is the soft equisier limit that you might have heard again in the previous class that is based on the principle of the thermodynamics we assume only softly re recombinations and then assume then work on the efficiencies for single junction solar cells and then in that case we find that a band gap of around 1.5 electron volt should lead to the maximum around 30 percent 33 percent efficient uh, solar cells that is right. right so then we can reach to that particular boundary but which is not the case at present but still we are working on it to come up with this new devices our materials are existing devices so how we work with this so the first characterization is what we need to characterize inside a laboratory but you need it so first thing that you need is a light source very standard light sources are available a b r c category then we need electrical measurements means we need a source meter with measurement capabilities that can if you are working a single device you need a source meter that can measure up to nano amperes and voltage up to few volts but if i am working on these systems which are on photovoltaic plant then i need these kind of devices which may up to few tens of amperes currents and few hundreds of volt or even volts that is there right so that range decides source meter measurement ranges will decide whether i am working with a single cell or we are working in a combination of cells or we are working in a real photovoltaic field okay what we will be measuring simple we will be measuring current and voltage characteristics in dark and in light and from there how we extract all the possible solar cell parameters that is our objective in this case right so if you do experiment in the presence of sunlight this is the characteristic that you will get sometimes you will get different than that that we will see right so this is a characteristic then we define the parameters the first parameter that you define is a short circuit current right so this is solar cell at your laboratory you vary the voltage across the device you get the current in presence of sunlight and that is there so the first term that you define is a circuit current when you do not have applied voltage and you allow the sunlight to fall on your system then you short circuit you short circuit a solar cell right directly connect right if i go back to the previous i don't connect any device here load here and i simply connect a emitter right then the current is my short circuit current when there is no v zero and then what is the maximum current that we see right so short circuit current is one of the important parameter when you make your device you want to right then another important parameter is open circuit voltage that you see on the voltage scale the maximum voltage a solar cell can produce at the cost of zero current it means infinite resistances there it means the leads are open right and they are measuring the voltage across the device that is a voc but you don't want to work at this point or this point why you want to drag the power from a solar cell at this particular point power is zero at this particular point power is zero because power is nothing but v into i at this particular point current is maximum but voltage is zero at this particular point voltage is maximum but current is zero so the power is zero so you are not going to work at isc or voc but these are the important parameters that decides the fate of your device so we need to understand so when you do these iv characteristics we need to find out these two parameters right right so open circuit voltage is the voltage which builds up across the cell as long as its terminals are kept on a high impedance means open network high impedance means infinite resistance the quantity is related to the band gap of same 
higher, higher the VOC because that much voltage it can generate or hold across the device. Right. How they are related with this? This these are related with the diode that we have. I is equal to I not it for EV over KBT minus one. When we put a light, then I will put this current minus IP. So if you these actual characteristics, they will be coming into the third uh, quadrant as well, right? So another thing that is very important. Once you know this, then we need to find out the fill factor. Fill factor is actually the important that basically tells you if it is a I diode, then you should not see any reduction in the current. So it will go ISC till we achieve VOC. So it will be a perfect rectangle, 90 degree rectangle. In that case, I get a maximum power for VOC and ISC because at that particular point, we will see VOC, I am getting ISC. That is an ideal condition. That is never possible, right? Because we have some on the system. So they deviate from this one. So how close you are to the rectangleness of your IV characteristics, in that case, how deviate from you will tell me the fill factor, right? The fill factor corresponds to the ratio of the power which can need be, which can be generated by the solar cell under maximum power conditions. When I say maximum power conditions, this is you, I have a voltage. If I take dV over dt, right, di, and then I find out at what i this is maximum, then I will find this is maximum at this particular voltage and this particular current. Recall this. So these two characteristics are important. So at these two particular points, by simple doing calculus, we can find out what is the maximum voltage and maximum current corresponding to which we will get the maximum. Then I take this as a perfect square because that is going to give me the maximum power. Then the ratio of these will give me the fit. Right. When it is connected to the product of VOC and ISC, so ratio is maximum. Then fill factor is IM into VM, the power that you can draw a device, maximum power divided by the ideal maximum power that is there. Right. So this is fill factor is like IM into VM ratio by VOC and I. That is there. Right. So maximum power that you are taking, that is VM into IM divided by the maximum ideal possible power for your device is VOC into ISC. So that is important, right? Right. Then cell efficiency is important because this fill factor is a contributing point to the overall efficiency of your cell. How you will define actual power that you can take is the fill factor times VOC into ISC, or you can say VM into IM. That is there. That is the maximum power that you can take, right? Divided by, it is the efficiency at the cost of incident power. So incident power that you have times, sorry, it is divided by the incident power to the useful power that you can take out from your device is VM into IM. That is the point. That VM into IM, if you recall the different fill factor, VM into IM is nothing but fill factor times VOC IS. That is it. So this is my efficiency of a solar that I have written somewhere 14%, 15%, 5%, 6%, 7%. So this is how we calculate. So these are the most direct solar cell parameters that we need to understand and that we need to quantify before moving forward. That is there. Right. Then, like I mentioned in the beginning, this a bit introduction to the source, what kind of sources should have. So the first thing that we want to understand, we have classified sources into A, B, C region. Why this is important? Because we want to see that how good they are matching the spectral region. That is important. They should cover the entire window of my solar spectrum with a huge uh, identicalness to the real solar spectrum. Right. So that is, and that has again, these are made again the standards of IEC, this particular number. So class A, if you see the spectral match is like maximum. Very small deviation is there. 
B type class has a little bit more around 5% respect of deviation, and C has around something 10%. That is there, nothing more than that. Temporal instability again is best in case of A type. So that's why we prefer to have A class. If you don't have, then you can look for B and C class. And if you don't have any then also you should not worry. Suppose if you are new in the subject and you want to make your own solar cell source by your solar device, you have a source, what you should do? Then you go to the local market, buy a Jinan source, Jinan light, which is used in bike and cars. And you buy a power supply with respect to that. And then you can question whether it is A type, B type or C type. It comes under B type. Because their spectral inhomogeneity is less than 5%, I can assure you. But you don't trust me. You There is a laboratory in Delhi, NPL. You can send your cell. You can light source with a power supply. Or you can go there. They have a responsibility to characterize. And then you can characterize the spectral window with respect to the identicalness of the incident solar light. And you find that it is within less than 5%. It is so you can do your experiment with a class B illumination source without spending too much money like this. And if you are rich enough, for example, if you if you are having enough resources to buy, then definitely go with a class A. That otherwise you can build at your own the way I said you that quantifies all these standards with a spectral resolution and a spectral intensity. Then where it is, its intensity will be reducing as we go away from the source. So there is a very small device called pyronometer that reads the integrated power falling on it. So you can buy that in 2500 from any Amazon or anything. And you can use this uh, gene from the motorcycle, motorbike or from the car accessories and use it. And you can use at what distance I am getting the AM 1.5 illumination and then you keep your solar cell device at that solar place and do all these characterizations like first you run a PV IV characteristics and then you estimate what is circuit current VOC, then fill factor and then cell efficiency according to your characteristics. Right. So this is something how a solar cell works and how we get the characteristics. So if you have a diode, so you know what is the diode. It's a simple PN junction and when there is no light falling, you will just get I equal to I naught e to the power EV over KBT minus one, right? So this is simple characteristics that you see. When you start signing, the same equation will remain same. What will happen? It will shift because a over photo generated current lead to minus IPH. I is equal to I naught in record e to the power EV over KBT or eta KBT where eta is just geometrical factor, materials factor minus one, this is again diode current, the first one, minus IPH. So it is like a changing the reference from I naught to minus IPH, and that is there. So this is the interesting part that we have. So in this quadrant, we are generating the power, right? In this case, that is there. So that we reverted this current characteristics for our own convenience to put I on the positive side and show the characteristics like reverse of this one, just like a mirror image of this one, right? So this is how it works. So you have a junction, you start light to fall on it, electron and hole pairs are generated. These are minority carriers in the P-type if they are generated because of the built-in, because of the built-in electric field, they are swept out on the N side electrons and on the P side holes to extract from the circuit and then to the rest of the job that is there. This is how the equivalent model that we made for, we make for a solar, ideal solar cell. What is there? So we have a current source, we have a diode. Diode has a current ID. Then we have a light source along my current. Then we can, for ideal source cell, we can write if it is generating a voltage V, then we can write I is equal to I load minus I naught e to the power EV or QV over eta times kbt minus one that is there right so il is nothing but photo current that is there right so same equation with this what i have done i have done just like minus sign of this one 
otherwise what i was telling you i was telling you i equal to i not to the power ev over kbt minus 1 minus ipl because i have shifted it into the positive side like the characteristics that i have shown you here so i have written it in the right direction that il minus i not that is there. so nothing only changing the reference that is there so now this is something way we understand and if you have a iv characteristics of your device like this one by an experiment that you do you can fit this particular equation because il is known to you zero you can calculate you can also calculate the identity factor as well or you can use the dark ray to get that and then match it now in actual devices okay fine this is an ideal device in actual device what we will face it is is not the case in actual devices we will be suffering from losses right so here if you see the title says it doesn't have any resistive losses so we do not have any losses then this equation is fine but what happens we have devices which are loose which which lose current we don't get the expected and expected voltage which is because of the series resistances and short resistances available in the system so what we'll do the series resistance will allow the voltage drop rather than getting the voltage v we will get the reduced voltage because the voltage is dropped across this particular point depending upon the current ideally this was the current now iph was the current with the id and then id iph minus id will be getting out and that we will be collecting through my load but now this current is dividing because of the my this is my load before i reach to the load this current which is iph minus id is divided into two parts one is coming through this one is coming through this right so in that case what we face we face that there is a voltage drop because of the series resistance and then there is a current drop because this current that i am getting is initially it was iph minus id now this is iph minus id minus a small component passing through this now what is the source of this shunt resistance defects so defects may produce a low current path across the device so the electrons rather than going to the n side they recombine and pass through this particular things so they will reduce this current similarly you have a contact resistance right whenever you are putting a contact on of your device it is not perfect. if it is if its energy levels are, are not perfectly aligned there is a mismatch that all act as a barrier right so that will cause a resistance that will lose we will lose the voltage across the device so these are like how they will modify my equation of current the same thing i is equal to iph minus i not e to the power i have ev over kbt but now v is not actual v v is now reduced so this is by minus so minus will be here this minus is getting absorbed with the q irs minus 1 minus a current part is reduced I initially current was iph minus i not but now one more fraction of current that is passing so this is what current will be passing through this what is the voltage across this particular point for example you see rss the voltage across rss is v plus irs right the actual voltage that you will be measuring plus irs this is the voltage at this particular point divided by the resistance rs so this is now the actual current when my system is suffering from is and some resistances and how they will affect the iv characteristics is important this is still assuming that there is a minimal effect on resistance and resistances that we will see so now if i summarize whatever we have done assuming you know about solar cell you have made solar cell in your laboratory and now you want to characterize solar cell you can have iv characteristics and include and try to find out voc isc maximum power corresponding to vm and im fill factor and efficiency then you also try to find out series resistances and shunt resistances what is the shunt strength it is reducing the short circuit current how from here so if it is deviating from this current you will see current characteristics like this so then it means here if you see if i take dv over by what will be the shunt resistance can anyone tell dv over di so t is this much and di is zero so shunt resistance is infinity so in this case shunt resistance is infinity so there is no issue in this if i take again 
here dv over di so dv is still changing di you will see so you will see some series resistances that the voltage drop so actual curve will also drop like this in so in this case whenever i get a dv over di so current is also changing like this factor and then we can say there is a shunt resistance so depending upon the nature of your current voltage characteristics of a solar you can also identify whether my shunt resistance is present in the device whether series resistance is present in the device or not and if they are what are their values you can just get a slope at these ends and at these ends to get the values of series and shunt resistances right right fine so these things how we compute that you have already seen that we have discussed about that how we can compute these uh, things short circuit current and this ones then open circuit voltage right again this is like you have this particular equation so if you set this isc v is equal to 0 if v is equal to 0 then this term goes to 0 then i is equal to minus ips the maximum current that you see similarly you can set this one so looking into this just like as a mathematical re adjustment when i is equal to 0 then you have a il is equal to i not e to the power ev over kbt minus 1 when i say e then minus sign is absorbed by itself. then you can write this voc taking logarithmic of this il or i not and then plus 1 then you get i is equal to kt or q ln i get or i not plus 1 recall you see these two terms current and open circuit voltage they are temperature dependent so recall how these things will change how voc will change when you are increasing the temperature of the device how the current will change when we are increasing the temperature right that we will see how they can see so these are the two important parameters that we have seen then other one was the maximum power so what you do you you take the iev characteristics and then you make power power means nothing you plot v into i against the voltage so then you will see a curve like this it is an ideal curve it should go like from zero passing through the p maximum and then coming through this particular point that is there otherwise if it has irregularities large series and short shunt resistances then you can otherwise it has to pass through because at initial point when v is equal to 0 and i is equal to 0 then this should be zero right but why i have put this curve intentionally because sometimes you may see the random behavior of your devices even intrinsic power is not zero it means some back ground light is available on the system leading the current not to equal to zero right so then you need to perform experiment carefully that will be also reflecting in your is your power characteristics may not be as because you are getting some current even at a very small power voltage as well right that we need to take care of right then we can get maximum power because of this particular curve nature where it is maximum power curve that will be my p vm and im and like like i said in the beginning whatever we are getting from these solar cells is a dc current right there's no time variation associated with this right fine so this this field factor again like i said square s rather than calling it square s i will better call it as a rectangleness because v and i they are not same so that we have seen once you have this characteristic curves you can find this as well then you can find out efficiency maximum solar cell power like vm into im which is nothing but fill factor times voc ic over pm right so all the parameters are now in your control and you can get back to now i was talking about series resistances and shunt resistances so what i see this is an ideal cell very good cell where you see it is like close to identical cells so the black curve is near to identical now what will happen if you keep on increasing the series resistances you see when series resistance is small then you will see a line which is nearly perpendicular as you keep on increasing this is getting flatter not vertical if you keep on increasing larges then this is there so more loss to the output will be there because a large fraction of the voltage drop will be across this inherent series resistance of your device that is there so how we find again i said now if you have your characteristics then i can take simply dv over di 
So dV, suppose if you take this much and then corresponding current changes like this to this much, then dV or dI, or you can take from here to here, you'll find out a large. In this case, change in voltage is more, change in current is small, so it is large, right? So that's where you can get this characteristic. Again, very important to understand how you are deviating from the real characteristics. So that is very important for us to understand, right? So fine. Then we have to go for sun resistances. In sun resistances, this characteristic is nearly same. Sun resistance is how much we are deviating from the ideal characteristics. Curves. For example, if you see that this was near to I, when I say dV over dI, so dV is this much and then dI is zero. So sun resistance, which we ideally infinite. So in that case, what is happening? I am changing my from ideal characteristic curves to this medium and then to large one, it will be like this. So in that case, what will be suffering? We'll be introducing RS, a large fraction of current is going through the device. And in that case, you define a resistance. You can find out what is the sun resistances. And then you can define a normalized uh, sun resistance. And then with respect to the normalized sun resistance, power will also get reduced by a factor of one minus R over RSH. So you can also find out what is the fill factor of your device sun resistance is present, that will be also normalized or scaled with a factor of one minus one over RSS. The same thing will happen with a series of resistance, fill factor are scaled by a factor one minus RS and one minus RS, right? Here, one minus one over RSH, that is there. After this, these are the characterization points. Now, another thing is quantum efficiency that is there. What is the quantum efficiency? It is the ratio of number of carriers. It is like integrated. All the wave solar cell and respective electron hole pairs generated in that device. Integrated one is a external quantum efficiency. External quantum efficiency, what I said, includes the effect of optical losses such as transmission and reflection to a certain extent. Internal quantum efficiency with this integrated quantum efficiency, internal quantum efficiency is like a response against individual wavelengths, right? So the efficiency with which the photons are not reflected or transmitted out of the cell can generate correctable carriers. It means individual photon, if, if it is greater than, if its energy is greater than the band gap of your material, it will be contributing to 100% internal quantum efficiency. But external quantum efficiency, because I am integrating over entire wavelength, 100% internal quantum efficiency now has to overcome losses present in the system. So that's why it includes the optical losses like reflection, transmission, as well as other losses present in the system. When you are integrating part to get internal quantum, from internal quantum efficiency to the external quantum efficiency. These are also interesting parameters to understand how your device is responding to the individual wavelengths and across the wavelengths. So this is how it should look like if I have an ideal characteristic curves, if I plot the external quantum efficiency against a wavelength till the band gap of incident photon is more, you will see one and or 100%. And once the band gap is reduced, you will see that, okay, efficiency drops down to zero because then there is no photon to contribute in electron hole pair generation. But above band gap, you have all the photons which are contributing in ideal case. Now, actually this is not happening. And the real curve is you are going to get like this kind of inverted, right? U curve, extended U can say. So what is happening here? Why the efficiency has reduced at a higher band gap reason? right because here band gap is certain here incident photon has a too high energy with respect to the incident photon what is happening here in this case because of the large energy associated with them and large number of electron hole pairs generated because of this one surface recombinations and other recombinations will reduce the external quantum efficiency the performance of cell will reduce now, what will happen in this reason? Your band gap is best matching with incident light. 
Here, external quantum efficiency is reducing by two factors. One is the reflection of light. A partial fraction of light is getting reflection reflected. That's why you see that we have used entry reflection thing to avoid that particular part. Second, we have losses because of my photo generated carriers have a small diffusion lens. So before they travel to the end part, to the current collector wire where you have put to take out the electron, current collector, it recombines within that. So that particular electron is not going to contribute into external quantum efficiency, right? Internal quantum efficiency, it has done its job. But in external quantum efficiency, I need to count only those electrons which are coming out for external circuit. Then this will reduce this particular response. And at a higher wavelength, for example, in red region where still you are above the band gap, reduces due to the rear surface passivation. So less absorption is happening at a longer wavelength. And again, the low diffusion length, even if a photon is generated, because it is at the end of the device, it again doesn't come out towards the contact size. Then above this, then it is suddenly to zero. Part and characteristic of your solar cell, but assemble at your own lab. Why? Because now I need to collect first the response across the individual table. It means then I need to integrate. So for that, I need a monochromator. I need to put a monochromator in front of my source so that I can collect the response and then I can integrate with the response to that point to get the complete test there. So now I believe one set of discussion where you have a solar cell and what kind of the best characterization that you can do for your solar cell. And its performance against take an example that we have made and we will show how poor it is. So this is a next generation solar cells, for example, that you can say people are exploring an alternative to uh, silicon solar cells. There's still a long way to go. So you have a complete solar cell assembly that we can fabricate device in laboratory. So we have a soda line glass. Then we have deposited around one micrometer, thick, not millimeter, this is micrometer. All one first M is micrometer. So 0.51 micrometer thick molybdenum as a back contact. Then we deposited a actual absorber using some technique, which is again a very low cost one, around one to three micrometers. And then we deposited a window layer that is a buffer layer or window layer that has a high band gap and N type so that it can make a heterojunction, heterojunction PN junction so that we can realize the photo solar cell. As a transparent conducting oxide, which has a dual role that it can act as an anti reflection coating, allowing the maximum to fall on that. that is it. Right. So n number of variants are there with respect to CJTS. People have varied this layer to optimize the performance, to reduce the cadmium because it's a toxic element and so on. So now if we fabricate this complete device, this is the solar cell characteristic. This is the dark characteristic that you can see. And this is the actual IV characteristics measured in the laboratory. And this is the solar cell geometry. So one solar cell was three millimeter by three millimeter, right? And these are the actual dimensions used in the So This assembly was made and these are the IV characteristics when there was no light and there was light present. So now looking into this, what you can say, I have a huge contribution from series resistances. You see a huge series resistances there. And then I have a contribution from the sun resistance. That's why we are not meeting or we are not close to the ideal characteristics of this. So we have a ISC, which is close to 
8 milli ampere per centimeter square. We have a VO that is like close to something like 0.4 volt. But at the same time, to be more precise, it is number is written 355 millivolt. But at the same time, we have, you see, the sun resistance is 160 ohm per centimeter. Then series is, these are normalized with respect to area is 21 ohm large to reduce the efficiency to 1.1%. Right? Power efficiency will be also low. Fill factor is only 42%. It means 58% of the rectangleness of my device is not meeting. That is the objective. So that is where it is the difficulty. So, but now with this, we can characterize all the resistance, what is sun resistance for this particular device. And then we can try to understand how we can improve the device to get a better efficiency, right? That is this. The diode non-ideality is also coming into picture. It is around 2.7. High series and low sun resistance of the device is also making worse these devices as well. Right. So that is now this thing to understand with this how these series and sun resistances are contributing into the, uh, really contributing into the picture. So we can take impedance of the device. It means I measure the impedance of my device, real component, imaginary component as a function of frequency. Beauty of this particular device is that I can model my device as a set of certain RLC circuit, only RC circuits, some other combination of this. So these are the model that device performance, but we try to Demos. And what we found, we have a huge error in my system. Now we improve the model to a better level. We can see that and CDS and CJTS. Others we passivated, so believe that the less contribution is there. So understand these we introduced new components, like we introduced using before as well because it's a waste as MIS2. So we also try to an interface between three between the two layers CJTS and CDS. When we put all the things together with an additional series resistance, I mean as a contact outside. If I put all the things together and then I take into account, then I find that okay, the, the experimental data is fitting very well and the error is less than 10% in both the cases. So now this gives you one more way of understanding the internal resistive dynamics that where the contribution of different resistances are there that leads to the poor device performance. So we understood that a large interface resistance means we have large defects. Large defect means they have a large recombination. So photo-generated current, where all photons, incident photons, greater than the band gap energy of my CJTS, will lead to photogeneration. But they will be recombining, even a huge fraction of them is getting recombined at the interface. This is the information that we can get from these impedance measurements as well. This you want it with a simple impedance analyzer as well. So this helps you to understand what kind of interfaces are present, what is their contribution, and what is the carrier average lifetime. So this is a average carrier lifetime that comes around this maxima. We can find out what is the frequency of this maxima.
no? and then we invert it, then we get eight millisecond. But remember, this is not the lifetime of your materials carrier. It is the lifetime of photo generated carrier that, that reaches after photosynthesis, it reaches electron reaches to the top aluminum dope zinc oxide contact at that particular point. So this is around very large. So that's why we need to get 0.1% efficiency in this case as well. So, that is that. so this is one part of discussion that we know how to characterize its parameters. And then few things you can add, which I have not included. For example, these IV characteristics are there. You put on a certain hot flanging, then you can find out how the series resistance, sun resistance are changing with temperature, how the VOC and IEC are changing with temperature. And then you can add more variations to your experimental understanding of the device. So after this point, we are talking about a single cell. Now we will move to from cell business to a bit larger business that leads to the actual solar photovoltaic modules that you see in your rooftops. That is there. Because one single cell is giving you very small voltage and very small current that is not going to satisfy the need. Then we need to take the help of combination of these solar cells to get me a useful output voltage and useful outcome as in terms of currents as well. Hello. Hello. Yes, Ambesh, sir, your uh, voice is cracking. How much time? I still have to go with the class. Sir, actually, uh, few, few minutes. Yes, sir. We can extend it for a few minutes. Okay, fine. So at least I can finish this part so that it will be easy for me to end the second part. Sure, sir. Fine. So now looking from an independent single device, we go to the actual photovoltaic modules that you see in your rooftops. We have a single cell that doesn't give me sufficient uh, voltage and current. So we go with a combination of series and parallel. So we build basically, this is again like adding batteries that you might have done these exercises in your earlier homeworks and studies. You can arrange batteries in series to get higher voltage in parallel to get more current. Yes. Same way we assemble these cells. If I do V1 plus V1 plus V1 10 times, I will get 10 times V1. So that is my voltage. So a, a module is designed for a 12 volt outcome. So depending upon whether I'm using a crystalline silicon solar cell, whether I'm using a amorphous silicon solar cell, or whether I'm using a based solar cell, I need to arrange in a combination of series so that I can get a sufficient voltage. Then I need to improve the current. Then I need to put them in a parallel of 10 combinations so that voltage remains 12 volt. And then the rest of the combination will increase the current keeping the voltage constant. So that is how a one module is created. So one module is a basic building block of a PV system, consisting of interconnected cells. All these cells should have the same characteristics. Otherwise, current mismatch will be generated and the current mismatch will lead to the internal heating of the photovoltaic modules and then that will damage it, right? Then setting is another impact that we will see. Then if I combine them, this is like one that gives me 12 volt with a certain milliampere current. It doesn't give me the power requirement that is suffice, that suffice the need of running a power plant where you have to generate few hundreds or few tens of megawatt power to supply to the grid or to supply 
for the local community for their any practical uses, right? So in that case, you need the model of a series and a parallel to get minimum series and parallel combination that leads to the megawatt power. That is in the peak time that, that we calculate. So that is like arrays will constitute a solar field for a solar power, solar photovoltaic system. So several modules are connected in series and parallel to increase the voltage current ratings and is known as array. A group of several modules connected in series combinations in a frame can be mounted on a structure. So these arrays are available. You can generate them in N numbers and then you can make a complete solar photovoltaic power plant as well. Right. So this is again a kind of different way how these power plants are array arranged. There is a combination of monopole or bipolar arrays. So monopole is simply you have one PV array that you take as a one and as a positive voltage, one and as a negative voltage. Whereas I put two PV arrays in the inverted form, then we call it as a bipolar. So center is tapped and then we have two arrays connected in one. So this is like a single unit. Center is tapped and then we show. So you can arrange a monopolar array combination or a bipolar uh, array combination for a desired power outcome as well, right? Similar PV devices when we add in series, like we have already said that we want to increase the voltage. So this is how the current characteristics will look like. If I have a N photovoltaic cells added in series or N photovoltaic modules added in series like this, how the voltage will add, they are in series, so voltage will add. If I have a V1 voltage, then N times Vn. Current will remain same. This is an intrinsic condition. If current is different from one device to the other device, if they are not identical, then I will have an internal heating. That will create a thermal uh, in the system because of I square R heating, and that may damage your device. So those are intrinsic requirements for a larger solar cells as well, right? This is how the current characteristics, when you keep on increasing the cell, the cell voltage will keep on adding it. Right, we want to V2 to V3 to V4, but current is still consistent, just like in case of that. Right, similar PV cells, why this is not going to work, why we cannot use them, why this is not acceptable, very simple. One is generating a large current, one is generating a less current. I1 is less than I2, so what will happen? A final current through the device will be only going, which is a smaller one. So, what will happen to this particular point? I2 minus I1 current will be, we will be losing in terms of I square R hitting between the mismatch between these two devices. And then any one of the device may get which has a more resistance as well. Voltage is adding V is equal to V1 plus V2. So when we have a dissimilar piece connected in series, the voltage still adds, but the current is limited by the lowest current output of. So I will get from the circuit I1, but I2 minus I1 is getting wasted where it will go. It will pass through the device resistance and cause I square R heating of the device. So that we will be losing and heating my own device and ultimately damaging. So this is not allowed. That a at a larger scale that we need to take care of it, right? When we add in parallel, again, we have voltage constant that is giving me whatever the voltage that in one devices I have added in series 10 devices. So that will be there. So uh, voltage will be same across these devices, but I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I3 will be keep on adding, right? So I am getting more current with respect to the same voltage that is there. For similar devices, again, if I have similar devices, then again, the lower current will be more effective. In that is why we need to take again we have a dissimilar devices then in this case we have seen so current is coming into this fine i1 plus i2 is adding so there is no issue but voltage will be not the same as v1 plus v2 by 2 in cell our module the individual currents will add, but the voltage setting effect, that's where we said is a problem. That's where we want that these devices should be uniformly light, uh, light should fall uniformly on these devices. Suppose if you have this device, but one module or one device is 
not functioning, then what will happen? Then this device is not producing the same current, right? It will be producing dark current. Recall, when light is not falling, it is a diode in dark condition. When it is producing a dark current, and you know when you are in a series, recall this particular point, when we are in a series, lower current is going to matter. So in our case also, lower current is going to matter. And then we will keep on reducing this performance, right? So this resistance will, there is no module is shaded, then we have a characteristics when when module with the 50% shadow is this when is 100% two more modules 100% shadow something again very important that you can characterize in your laboratory that how your device if you have a optics or if you are working with a power plant and you want to understand how the devices are working you want to target why the performance is not like IV characteristics are deviating from the normal world it means there is some issue of people do different mechanisms like they try to avoid bypassing it so they use bypassing that particular diode where it is settled so if by mistake this, this is the situation this diode is Shadow and others are lightning. So you have a diode. So in that case, the maximum current you pass through, ignoring this. So in this like this, when you have a shadow, then you have a, a what is called shaded resistance deviating far from the said no shaded reason. So that is how we minimize the loss by putting a bypass diode across each module to avoid the case. Not across each cell, but across each module that we can take care of it, right? So up to this point, let me stop. That tells me how from a cell to a module level, how we understand a solar cell in terms of numeric so let me know if you have any question at this particular point that is there. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful session uh, in which you covered all the fundamental concepts related to solar cell technologies. Now I have a few questions in the chat box. So uh, without wasting time now, uh, I'm taking these questions. Uh, the first question is, how can we develop entrepreneurship in our students to work in the field of solar cell technology and uh, so that they can contribute in the governmental solar projects. Okay, so I think this question, I may not be the right person to answer because I don't have that inclination to this particular talk, but I can try to answer your question as a outsider, not an expert, right? So if you want to be an entrepreneur in this domain, a very simple thing is there. I discussed about the characterization of these things. I discussed only the IV characteristics of solar cells. So for example, you may be a service provider to the solar photovoltaic power plant people that I can provide, I can help you in understanding the IV characteristics of your solar cells. I can try to figure out whether your power plant is working fine in terms of power characteristics and if there are some problems how we hand can remove them there is a dust problem how you can take care of it so those kind of services you can provide as an entrepreneur then you can open a company that provides a testing facility for example you have a different type of solar cells for example silicon photovoltaic cells silicon amorphous photovoltaic cells ci gs uh, uh, ci gs based solar cells then you can provide them a kind of outcome that how good your solar cell is or how bad your solar cell is, 
with respect to the power characteristics. So that you can do. Second thing that you can do, you can try to find out innovative way of cleaning these power plants. These are expanded in kilometers. The dust is wherever these power plants are there, dust is by default. So how to clean them? That is that if you can come up with some innovative idea, integrate them automated or semi-automated cleaning that reduces the water consumption by 50%, 60%, 70%. You can save, for example, in Rajasthan, you can save the consumption of water for cleaning to maybe 70%, 80%. Those are like regions where you can integrate yourself to be an entrepreneur to provide a solution provider. Another important thing is that now in India, no one makes us, right? Except few companies like BHEL or BEL, those are making a limited number. But most of us, we are buying a model where rest of the solar cell technology is India. It uses power converters, AC to DC and DC to AC. We frequency synchronizers, those are, can we make them? Answer is yes. Can we have the building structure because you need to put these PV modules on stainless steel or lightweight structures so that they are able they can wear the wind speed in the open fields. So can you provide a, a solution? You want to be an entrepreneur? Can you be an entrepreneur? to provide a solution that I am providing modules, rest of the things are, if you permit with, if your time permits, use after 25 years. They are garbage. Well, actually, we are getting a lot of disturbance in your voice. Yes. It is not clearly audible. How to handle this electronic waste can a can some of you find hands and entrepreneurial again? Hello? Is it fine? Yes, sir. Hello? So, not audible? Are yes, sir. Now it's audible, sir. Problem. Yes, sir. So we are not getting okay. your voice, sir. So then we have a shooting years. What we will, how we will handle, look for regeneration of this a huge industry. Demand will be coming in coming 20 years. Okay. So how should I handle? Should I turn off my video and then try to answer? Let me see. Now if it works better. Hello. Yes, sir. Sometimes we are getting yeah. a disturbance. Yes, sir. Right now it is audible, sir. Okay, not possible. Fine. So now you can see. So there are n number of solutions that you can provide as a technological solutions. Being an entrepreneur, I hope I have answered some of the unexplored areas. Is it fine? Thank All you right. so much, sir. Do you yes, have sir. more questions? Yes, sir. I have uh, uh, another question. Actually, two participants they have asked a similar question. Uh, one question is: one question is, is silicon carbide material is a good choice for solar cell? And another no. similar question uh, we have. No, first is, answer. Uh, so yes, first sir. answer, the one who is asking for silicon carbide is a good price. He should. Have Answer its question itself. It is not a good question. So it doesn't absorb any incident. So silicon carbide itself is not a good choice for a solar cell application because it's large band gap. 
Yes, sir. So, uh, another question, uh, which is quite similar to this one. Uh, what are the limitations of uh, other materials if you are using them in the solar cell in place of silicon? What are the major limitations in that case? Yes, Ambesh sir, if I am audible to you, please unmute yourself. Hello, Ambesh sir, am I audible to you sir? So thank you so much everyone for joining this session. Uh, due to technical difficulties, uh, we'll be continuing the question answer sessions in the uh, second part of the day, like in the session two, that will be starting from 1.30 to 2.30. So I request all the part, uh, participants to join back again at that time for the second session of SIR. Uh, now with this, I declare end to the session one. Thank you so much everyone for joining.